Hi guys, Victoria Paxton here. Thanks for stopping back by my YouTube channel. Okay, so like, share, subscribe, it's free. Don't look at my hair. Okay guys, so today we're talking about Susan LaRosa. So Susan LaRosa disappeared on June 22nd, 1975 from Vernon, Connecticut. Susan, her three kids, and her husband lived in a small apartment at 22 Ward Street. Her husband, Robert, called Vernon Police to report her missing. He said he had last seen her walking towards Rockville that night. Robert thought she had taken off with another man. He said she was always flirting with other guys. Then loggers found LaRosa's body, um, her skeletal remains, and scraps of clothing in the woods about the length of a football field south of I-84 in Vernon. The identification was made with dental records and a clothing description that her husband had given. And can I just, like, step in here for a second? How do people... Okay, when your child's little, that's different. You know, you usually keep track of what they're wearing, right? But when you're an adult, I doubt I could ever say, oh, my husband was wearing blah, blah, blah when he was last seen. And I doubt he could do the same for me. Like, I don't... Maybe it's just me, but I don't pay that much attention to what people have. You know what I mean? So I always wonder. Yeah. Okay. So a medical examiner, um, determined that LaRosa's skull had been fractured. It may have been caused from a bullet. Members of Susan LaRosa's family remembered seeing what might have been blood stains in her apartment after she disappeared. Remember that they went into the apartment 27 years later after her disappearance, and they collected floor samples to see if they could find blood. Why was that not done right after she disappeared? That's what I want to know. You know, because I'm sure the family called the police and said, hey, we were in collecting some of our sister's stuff, and we thought we saw blood. I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, I totally don't get it. Um, needless to say, I guess, wow, it just went really dark. Okay, so I was able to connect with Susan, but before we go there, please, you may notice some lighting changes. The sun just went down, it got dark, and then we turned lights on, and the sun came back up. So, I have lights, but I don't want to turn them all on unless I absolutely have to because they're so daggone hot. Okay, so anyway, Susan came through. She was bubbly. And listen, I never expected her to come through because she disappeared so many years ago. She died so many years ago. I was thinking, oh, she might be reborn again. But she came through. She was bubbly, happy, like 19, 20 years old. Um, okay, so uh, we talked about her kids and her husband. And I asked her, I said, you know, um, talk to me about your husband. And she said, first she truly loved him, but as the kids came and the longer she was with him, the more jealous he became. Um, he would constantly accuse her of looking at other men and flirting. She talks about the looking first and then later comes. So I just love it all together. She talked about, he was always accusing her of looking and flirting um, she spoke about any time they went anywhere, he would literally sit there and watch her to see if she was looking at a guy. Really? Who the heck has time for all that crap? Um, she said the fights had gotten worse and more extreme as the days went on. She said she loved him, but that at some point things changed and she just really became afraid of him. So I asked her if Robert was telling the truth about the last time that he saw her. She said she didn't know what he had said. So I stopped and went and researched and came back and told her. She said, okay, so he said the last time he had saw her, she was going to the store and he thought she had left with another man. She said, I would never leave my babies for anyone or anything. She also stated that what Robert told the police was a lie. She went on to explain her last day. She said Robert came home. She thought it was around 2 p.m. I asked her if he was at work, and she said it was a Sunday. She said he kept bringing up little things from the past, like when he accused her of checking out their neighbor, 
Um, anything he could think of, he would bring it up. She said he was getting angrier by the minute. Okay, so she described a look that he would get in his eyes just before he would hurt her. And I actually know this look um, because my ex-husband had that look. I know it. I mean, when she was talking about it, I was like, oh my God, like I know exactly where you're coming from and what you're talking about. So she changed the subject and she started talking about being 16 and getting married. Um, she said she was just so head over heels in love and she just knew that they would be the odds and they'd be together forever. Um, so I said, you know, can we go back and talk about your last, like, day? She went on to say that he had that crazy look in his eyes and that she was, you know, becoming more and more afraid because when he would get that look, he would hurt her. So, um, she said the other thing was he had gotten really good at hitting her and not leaving a mark. And again, typical abuser behavior, they get that way. So two of the kids were laying down. She checked on them. She was able to get away from them for a second. Um, she thought maybe that would defuse the situation. The baby was in, a, in his carrier. She said before she even realized what happened, he had grabbed her up out of the chair by her hair. He pushed her as hard as he could. She said she didn't remember many details after this because she had she hit her head at some point and her head was pounding and everything went into slow motion. At some point, she realized she was bleeding. She said somehow she went from the living room and she was now outside of the bathroom. She remembers hitting her head again and everything going dark. It was later that she realized she was dead. She then realized her body was thrown into the woods. Okay, so I said to her, like, I, you know, I, I just, I, you know, why did he not go to jail? Like, you know, and she said that from what she was able to get. So I guess when you're up there, you can see things, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, she said it didn't appear that he was even a suspect in her disappearance. Say what? How was he not a suspect in her disappearance? Oh my God, I have something in my eye. Ow, ow, ow. Yeah, that makes no sense to me. And going back to when I did all the research and why did that, they not go into her house? Like, I don't understand why they didn't go and search her house. That's just, so many things about this case just don't make any sense. Like... You know, this this guy has like a four-leaf clover up, up his butt or something because things just don't add up. You know what I mean? Um, I think there's a lot more to this story than what we're seeing and hearing. And it's really sad because, you know, this guy's gotten away with it for all these years. That's really screwed up. Be nice. Be kind. Mm, try to stay healthy. You know... Cold weather's coming. So now we get to add the flu along with COVID. Yay. Um, stay safe. Stay sane. Who says that? Somebody that watch on YouTube says stay safe. Stay sane. I don't know. Um, I hope everybody, everybody's having a good week. And that about does it for me. Bye, guys. Yeah. <laughs>